Hey everybody, it's Cosmo the Cody here and welcome to another Humble Bundle review. This week it's the Humble PC and Android Bundle 14, which is kind of scary to think that there's actually been 14 of these. They obviously are quite good then. <laughs> now, um, just so we're clear, I, I'm comparing prices to what's on the Steam store in, in this review and not what's on the Android store, mainly because I haven't got access to it and also because I'm mainly a PC gamer and that's how I'm going to be playing them. Uh, sadly, I am on the rival iPhone, so the chances of me actually playing these on an, any Android device is extremely limited. But the cool thing is you can play them DRM free and they are available on Android as well as Steam. So not a bad, you know, not a bad sort of mix of things. So let's take it from there, shall we? So first up, we've got pay what you want for three games. First up, a game that I can only assume you pronounce is or uh, as 10 million. Oh, and that, that was the other thing. I should point out that right now, because of the Steam summer sale, all prices of these games are affected. Um, the, I think the, the lowest is like 50% and the highest is like 75%. So right now you can get all these games quite cheaply on Steam, but I will tell you right now that the price overall um, for them uh, is lower here than they are on, or if you were to purchase them all in, individually on Steam. That is, of course, dependent on how many you own already, but that's something you guys have to figure out for yourselves. No, anyway, sorry. Back to the review. 10 million is 99p at the moment on Steam. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It, essentially, it's a hybrid of an RPG, an action game, and a puzzle game where basically you match tiles in a sort of puzzle-esque, sort of bejeweled element, and these control your character, so enabling you to fight monsters and, and uh, capture loot and so forth. And when you're not actually sort of traversing these dungeons, you're actually sort of um, going, sort of fixing up your castle, improving your skills and your abilities. It's... Uh, and essentially the whole idea is to get to 10 million points and then you can earn your freedom it's got some quite really some good reviews on steam it's 76 percent in the recents 89 overall 67 percent on metacritic the biggest sort of general criticism around the game is that it's not like bejeweled it's sort of a bit uh a bit what can be a bit dull a bit boring for puzzle people but as you can as you probably saw from the video it's kind of a Odd little, odd little game that I'm sure will appear that sure, surely appeals to certain people. It might appeal to you. It might not. Definitely worth a look. Badland. I'm pretty sure I've played Badland. Maybe not the game of the year edition, but definitely bad at some point. It's uh, 174 at the moment on Steam. It's a it's 2D side scroller, as you can see. Sort of, it's an action and adventure platformer set in a forest where you play a creature. That's exploring the forest to find out what's going on, as something has is wrong with the forest. So it's got a sort of a, as you can see, sort of puzzle esque sort of sort of trap esque gameplay. It's got local co op, so you can actually play with friends in this game as you sort of try and survive all the traps and solve all the puzzles. It's fairly good, fairly well reviewed on Steam, sort of eighties recently, and sort of seventy nine percent on Metacritic. So it's it's definitely sort of an, well, got its perks, shall we say. It's definitely an interesting sort of game, and a lot of people quite like playing it. It looks quite nifty too, <laughs> based on the video anyway. Okay, next up is Spacecom, which um, is basically a real-time strategy game. That's uh, uh, Sorry, it's £2.24 coming on Steam. It's, it's a strategic real-time strategy game where you command fleets of ships in a bid to win a war that's raging on in a sort of in space basically you're like a starfleet commander um it basically and that's basically as much as you can see i mean as you can see from the actual video it's you controlling different star systems you taking over sort of outmaneuvering your enemies taking on your enemies it's um okay review 71 percent overall on steam 68 percent on metacritic in general, they just it, it, the general sort of con concerns or criticism is that it's kind of a, I suppose, a simplistic sort of real time strategy game. It depends on your point of view of real time strategy games, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> 
but yeah generally speaking it's not a bad price so I think it's just one usually it's one dollar isn't it for three games that are even with a steam sale still you know still a good good deal now we'll go to this blue box over here in a minute but we'll go to scroll down to the um what is a blue tier as well, but sort of the lower blue tier, blue, blue tier? Yeah, the lower blue tier, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> the lower blue tier. So another three games and obviously the potential for more games coming next week. Please don't touch anything is, well, <laughs> it, it's currently 79p on Steam. It's basically a point and click puzzle game where you're basically sat in front of a console with a button and you're basically covering for a colleague who's taking a bathroom break and you basically explore what this console does by pushing buttons flicking switches trying to solve puzzles based on the instructions that are sort of being left rather oddly in um rather oddly in a poster it, there's it's essentially an, an exploration game trying to figure out what all the different um sort of avenues you can go down apparently there's like 25 possibly 26 endings in this game that basically you get depending on how you do things um <laughs> it's in the it's in the uh it's reviewed as fairly in the 80s on steam it's one of those games that you're going to like it or not really i think it sort of divides people because some people think it's silly and some people think it's really extremely clever you know, take it as you wish, Will, you know. <laughs> and no, it doesn't include the VR version, for, if you're asking. It doesn't include that. That's that's something else, entirely different. You know, you can move your phone around if you like, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, Spider, Rides of the Shadow Moon, is an odd one. I'll give it that. Um, it's 249 currently on Steam. It's an action puzzle game where you play as a spider. Amazing enough. Basically, you go on the hunt for insects that will give you abilities when you, you capture them in your webs and devour them. And the idea is you explore levels set in this mysterious mansion that's been built by a secret society. So there's sort of a puzzle-esque um, element to the whole sort of game. Just sort of exploration, understanding the world that you're in, and just trying to un see what there is in the world. It's highly reviewed actually on steam it's 96 percent quite overall and it looks quite interesting the art style as well as the sort of the idea of the game looks quite impressive i have to say so maybe i'll have to add it to my list of cosmo tries games for the future just to just just just, just for the fun of being a spider you know i love it six right next up you must build a boat if it looks now if it looks familiar then it should do because it's actually the sequel to 10 million Yes, that's right. It's a sequel to 10 million. The same sort of game premise where you have to match tiles in order to combat enemies and so forth. But instead of a castle, you're basically building a, a boat. And you sort of recruit crew members, monsters, whatever it, take, whatever it takes to basically build up this boat. And I, I assume you survive a storm or something or, or a pond or something. I don't, I don't know. I kind of lost track of it based on these instructions that basically tell you what you have to do in order to play the game. Other than you must build a boat. It's one thirty five one pound thirty five on Steam at the moment. Reviews are pretty good. Seventy five percent recently, eighty four percent overall on Steam, seventy one percent on Metacritic, so it's pretty much on par with its predecessor. So if you enjoy ten million, you should enjoy this game as well. What games are coming up? I have no clue because there's no overall theme other than what's available on Android and Steam, and that's pretty much as much as I can tell you beyond that. So the sort of extra blue tier, which is um, basically the average price plus three bucks, or about one pound fifty-ish, depending on your my conversion. Thanks, thanks to thanks to the UK. Well, it's thanks to the UK and the EU public thing. Money has changed slightly. The, the exchange rates have changed slightly. So it's all a bit sort of. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> two games straight off. Desktop Dungeons is actually five ninety nine on Steam. It's an an RPG rogue like game where you basically pick a class and traverse a dungeon in a sort of turn based combat esque game. It's supposed to be quite easy and straightforward to pick up, as well as quite easy and straightforward to die quite quickly. So overall, it's. Um, 
a pretty well received RPG. I can say it's quite. It's got ninety one percent overall and eighty two percent on Metacritic. So it's definitely one of the better RPG games in this sort of bundle, or at least considered to be one of the better RPG games in this bundle. It's really going to be dependent on your style of play that and how it works and how you feel about it. But overall, it definitely looks quite good fun. Knights of Pen and Paper 2 is the sequel, obviously, to Knights of Pen, Pe Knights of Pen and Paper, where you basically play um, well a group of individuals sort of playing a Dungeons and Dragons-esque game at a table, but the actual adventure you're on is sort of portrayed in a usual video game style as you can see sort of from the actual video you see it it definitely sort of it, it's definitely sort of a, um, a cool kind of ex way of portraying the game as if you're playing like a Dungeons and Dragons game it's currently 279 on Steam good reviews 90% recently 85% overall um, definitely worth a good look at again if you're into RPGs and the art style looks pretty cool too, at least to me it is. Now that's pretty much it for this bundle. Um, I was going to just check something because... No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything. Cool. Because um, I forgot to mention it last week for the Sonic bundle in that the actual tiers of games in, bun in this bundle are um, essentially split in the steam keys you get so you actually got a steam key for the whole green la layer or the whole white layer or the whole blue layer so you if you already owned the sonic games and quite a lot of people that i know did then you don't get any extra copies which is annoying but it is what it is you know it kind of i see why they've done it because there's so many sonic games and a lot of people are going to have the sonic games so annoying it is but at the end of the day, you're getting a load of Sonic games. Can't really complain. As predicted, the the extra games are the three remaining Sonic-esque games that weren't included in, in the bundle and were on Steam, which were Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Sonic and Knuckle, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and Sonic Spinball. Now, all th uh, hang on, let me just check. Yeah, all three of them at the moment are one ninety nine on Steam thanks to the sale. Um, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is well, basically, um, a sort of Tetris clone where you basically match be match coloured beans up to uh, basically fight off uh, different opponents, different robots built by Doctor Robotnik. It's an okay game. I was never into the those kind of puzzle games, and I have played it, but unfortunately, I got sort of stuck because the difficulty level shot through the roof after like I think the fourth or fifth level. So. It's a game that, if you're into those kind of games, is worth a look at, and it's it's fairly good fun. But it gets rather annoying when you can't beat this guy because you can't match match them up fast enough. And he's obviously a computer player; he can. Sonic Three and Knuckles. Um, if you don't know the history of Sonic Three and Knuckles, the sh the short version is that they made Sonic Three first, and whilst they were making Sonic Three, they realised that they couldn't make all of it into one cartridge. It was too expensive to make. So they split the game in half and did Sonic 3, which was essentially the first half of Sonic, the, the original plan. And then Sonic and Knuckles came along later in a special lock-on cartridge where you basically put Sonic 3 into the top of Sonic and Knuckles and created Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And that basically expanded Sonic 3 to include all the other content that was sort of planned for the cartridge. It was an interesting idea. I have to admit, it was a weird cartridge, but it it was extremely clever because it let you play Knuckles in Sonic 2. It, it let you play um, lots of bonus stages. It is by far one of the, uh, I suppose, the largest 2D Sonics that there is. The biggest downfall of it was that Sega tried to take what worked really well in Sonic 2 and add a lot of innovation to it. They kind of overcomplicated Sonic. They gave more abilities, more shields. They sort of enhanced the levels. The levels were made bigger and longer. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, but what was considered the important parts of Sonic, like the Sonic 2, the speed, the the fun factor, was sort of added to when you realise that there's like three different types of bonus levels and the, the sort of the whole element of Sonic got a bit lost in this rather um, overcomplicated kind of game. 
it's a good game, like I said, so definitely worth a play in anyone's sort of Sonic history. Definitely check it out. Sonic Spinball is probably the biggest, oddest gay Sonic game that there is. Um, if memory serves, it was one of the few Sonic games that wasn't actually developed by um, Sonic Team exactly. I think it was more developed by Sega of America, but that's just that's me trying to remember off the top of my head. So if I got that wrong, I apologize, Sonic fans. It wasn't intentional at all. Um, <laughs> essentially, it takes Sonic and he puts it in, puts you into a pinball-esque environment. You still there's still an element of platforming, but it's very very limited. Um, it's not one of the best of Son best Sonic games. A lot of people like it. Some people think it's kind of the sort of Sonic Sega trying to take Sonic and put him into a new sort of scenario. It works for some and not for others. I played it and had fun with it. It's quite hard, I have to say, especially sort of after a certain point because you've got to complete missions like destroy this bad guy, destroy this enemy, and it's difficult to shoot right down the right shoots and so on and so forth. So, so but it's still quite good fun. You know, all, all the Sonic games are fairly good fun to a certain point, apart from maybe ones that are boring. Hint, hint. But. It is what it is. Okay, so overall, a good prediction by me, considering there wasn't much and many other Sonic games on Steam. So, it, you know, it couldn't have gone many more other way, but a very nice bundle nonetheless. And that is pretty much it for me from, the, from this review. So, a reminder Humble Monthly is due in two days' time, or two, hour, two days and 20 hours, according to when I recorded this video. Um, so if you're interested, then you have very little much time, very little much. <laughs> you have not got much time to, to sort of sort, subscribe to it in order to get it. No, I'm not paid by Humble to do that, to advertise it. It's just a sort of suggestion. And that, um, dear friends, is pretty much it, as always. As always, like and subscribe, comment, dislike, do whatever you feel you need to do in terms of this video and thank you for watching and i will see you next time for another humble humble bundle review happy gaming <laughs>